Welcome to Build Up Buttercup, an event where businesses from the Dress Up Buttercup community will come here to Houston, Texas to pitch their brands in hopes of securing a deal that will help build up their dreams. Hello. Hey. Howdy. How's it going? Good. Well, howdy, Bub Investors. My name is Eric Quorum, and I'm excited to share with you about how AIM7 is turning wearable technology data into personalized health and wellness solutions. Now, before I do that, I wanna share a little bit of background on myself. It'll make things make a little more sense. Prior to starting AIM7, I spent about 15 years in the NFL and working in college football as a sports scientist and performance director. My job was to take data and to turn it into human performance solutions that improve performance and reduce injuries. Now, the origin story of AIM7 begins in 2010 when I was hired by the new head football coach at Florida State University, Jimbo Fisher. And in our first season, we went from six wins to 10 wins, but I felt like we were underperforming. We had great coaches, we had great players, but we were often injured, and I felt like there was room for improvement in the way we were training and developing our athletes. So I went to Australia to learn about the emerging field of sports science and athlete tracking. So I went back to Coach Fisher, and I convinced him to let us start using this technology to track our players in practice and in games so we could better understand what was happening on the field and we could use this data to improve performance. These were connecting to GPS satellites and giving us a host of information on like how fast they were running, how far they ran. So I was literally duct taping these to the pads of our players. And after a couple weeks, he comes to me, he's like, all right, Eric, what are we gonna do with this? And I didn't have a meaningful response. And as you can imagine, that didn't sit well with him and it didn't sit well with me. And that's when I realized that data without insight is completely useless. So I did what I think anybody else would do when faced with a ton of telemetry data. I hired a former NASA propulsion engineer to help me organize the data and derive meaning from it. But we learned two things. Number one, our players were worn out. And number two, although each position has unique requirements, we were training everybody the same in the off season. So we flipped the script and we used data to develop personalized training plans for each position to change the way that we practiced and we managed player health. Everything worked out all right. The next season we had an 88% reduction in injury. We won the ACC championship in the Orange Bowl. That team actually went on to win a national title. And after that season, the NFL flew in. Like, all right, Eric, what are you doing here? But what I experienced at Florida State is now playing out in the consumer market and it's causing millions of people a huge problem. So you have to ask yourself, why do people buy wearables? Well, over 100 million people own wearables because they want to change their behavior. They want to sleep better, they want to exercise more, they want to manage their stress better, they really just want to feel better. But wearables don't change behavior, they just measure it. This is Aura, okay? It's a wearable device company. I think you guys are wearing one, right? I'm wearing it too. Last night, I'm sitting there, I saw Ted has an Aura ring yeah, this week. Everything. I was shopping Aura looking for this, basically. Yeah. I want something to tell me what to do with my data. They do a phenomenal job of tracking sleep and biometrics like HRV. The problem is not hardware. It's the lack of personalized recommendations. So forget the cookie cutter programs, the one size fits all problem, the burnout problem, the guessing problem. They give you a plan, but AIM7 is bringing world-class wellness to anybody with a wearable device. Simply stated, we built a solution that tells you exactly what you need to do each day for your mind, body, and recovery so you can look, feel, and perform your best. Right now, we are end-to-end -end integrated with the Apple Watch and we provide exercise recommendations for over 80 different types of exercise. Is there workouts on here or like what is it that... No, so we don't, we don't create workouts. Okay. Part of wellness too is finding a way to move your body in which you enjoy. But AIM7 is way more than exercise recommendations. Do you see that where it says breath work tool right there? Yeah. Ted, I saw your thing on uh, meditation. Hey, I'm all in, man. Yeah. <laughs> so if you were to click start okay. and go down to the bottom, it's gonna give you hepatic feedback in your hand, and it's also gonna give you an auditory cue of when to inhale. Now I gotta put my meditation voice on. When to exhale. So we built these tools so that you could do it in your car, you could do it at work, you can do it while your kids are screaming in the playroom. <laughs> She's like, I can't hold my breath that long. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to do the whole thing, but you can see what I'm getting at. Well, I'm gonna let you finish and then I have so many questions. I'm excited to answer. What I'm looking for is investors and marketing partners that catch the vision of AIM7 and believe in our mission in empowering people to live healthy and impactful lives. So what do you guys think? Would you be excited about joining us to go out and impact millions of people? 
Love it. Yeah, love it. Good job. Good job. Yeah, great that was job. Awesome. We're excited. What made you specifically apply to like the Bills Up Buttercup team? Like my wife. So I literally had like two days. Yeah. So I made a video in my office, sent it to guys yeah. like, cut this up. Here's why I want you to cut it. And I didn't know what to expect, but I'm very thankful to be here. Yeah, that you're here. Okay, so tell me, this is super impressive. How much money have you raised to date? Uh, Pre-seed round of 600000 We had some seasoned investors, including the former general manager of Houston Texans, Rick Smith. Rick. We're currently in a million dollar seed raise right now. We have 550 already invested. But you've achieved all this with just a $600,000 fundraise? Yeah, it was a grind. That's pretty I didn't amazing. pay myself anything. So going back to the deal that you have on the table, you're raising a million in this safe. And so so a safe, y'all may all know this, but just in Thank case you, anyone doesn't, it just, <laughs> just stands for simple agreement for future equity. So when companies are like really early stage, like pre-revenue, it's a way that you kind of don't have to agree on what the valuation is today. You just agree that at a future date, when he raises at a valuation, the most you'll have to pay is a $5.5 million valuation. So until then, it's kind of carried as debt that converts to equity later. Is there any way you can add one that says golf, just so I can say <laughs> And I can just say, look, it says I have to golf. Like, it's for my health. My, my, mind, and, my mind and wellness. I mean, yeah, like walk or ride, drive or putt today, that would be really easy for us. Cool. Yeah. Whatever the cost, it's worth it, right? I am I am a user. Day one, you open it up, I'm in, I'm paying 15 bucks, and I'm happy to do it. I bought the Apple Watch for the same reason. Like, yeah. surely Apple, with all the data they have, can tell me what to do with it. I don't even know what my activity bars mean. <laughs> I'm your power user. Let's go. Well, like, I want to fine tune this machine, but in order to do that, I need to take the inputs that I've got, the data that I have, and make it actionable. Well, what are you thinking, Carrie? Yeah, where are you at, Carrie? Here's what I'm thinking. So, I'm personally, primarily here representing Curate Capital, the venture fund I founded. And as a smallish fund, our primary you know, goal is to invest in female founded businesses. So I'm a little um, conflicted. I'm actually a partner at another um, fund here in town. And so as a partner in their fund, I, I'm not authorized uh, to make sure. a deal today, but I'd like to explore that possibility with yeah. you. So. What, do you, what do you think, Dee Dee? I think it would be something that we're missing. I feel like I talk about wellness. Ted and I just started on a wellness journey. We hired a coach. Well, what's most important to you? The use, is it the users or? 100%. What's your burn rate? 60K, but yeah. I need to scale that up. You're impressive. Yeah. yeah. That's what I kept saying to him. You're like, impressive. He's the impressive. impressive. The platform is. Yeah. The fact so, you've been able to achieve so much with so little says yeah. a lot. So kudos to you and your hard work and what you've achieved. And I also want to give you capital. Well, I'm, I'm good to offer you the 450K from Trend directly. Let's do it. Um, I'm more invested in you personally. Yeah. Yes, I agree. We all are. But I think we're able to finish off that for you. Yay! Cool? All right. Thank you. Congrats, man. Thank you very much. Love it. Hey. Hi. Hey. How's it going? Good. My name is Meredith Gregory. I'm one of the co-founders of Coral. And I'm Mike Viviano, one of the other co-founders. Unfortunately, we had two of our other founders unable to make it. Uh, our original kind of creator of the idea is at our facility. And then my wife is, uh, we're having our fourth baby next Tuesday. Hey, number four. My name is Vanessa Viviano. I am Mike's wife, before the co-founders of Coral Spirits. I will be having our fourth baby. And we'll get a hat. I cannot wait for y'all to try our drinks. And I hope you love them as much as we do. And cheers. I love that. She's obviously the sweeter one in the relationship. <laughs> so, again, we're very proud of this product. So, I'm going to pass out samples to them. So, we would literally just post up at HEBs. From HEB to HEB, post yeah. it up. Yeah, we would schedule demos. Uh, a lot of them we would do ourselves just because obviously we're a little bit more passionate. And it was also cool to get a direct response, you know, what they liked. This past summer, HEB mandated us, which the, the cool thing of that is now 198 stores put us into the cooler. So that was exciting for us, because then How we How many went, are there HEBs in Texas? 330, okay. yeah, I mean, they're, they're opening up new ones by the day. So the one that you have in front of you is our cucumber watermelon. Um, for us, it's really our lightest, most refreshing fit flavor. I think the first thing you'll notice is the carbonation level is really light. So we don't call it a seltzer because it doesn't 
doesn't have the seltzer characteristics, all natural flavoring, just no artificial sweetener. So again, the first thing you notice, I think, is that carbonation. The second thing you notice is a really soft aftertaste because it doesn't have artificial sweeteners. I feel like I could drink a lot of these way too quickly. Though. Yeah, that's scary. <laughs> if I had time, which I don't anymore, I love to play golf, and it's just such a nice drink too, to take great. out on the golf course. So coral equals more golf is what I heard. Yeah. Is that right? Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> if you need me to be a taste tester on the golf course, for <laughs> sure. Right for you, let me know. I get it. So this is my wife creation again I wanted to you know when I said I wanted to be involved with the flavors that was the first thing she said like she's how cool would it be if we did my favorite drink in a can the drink calls for a salted rim and then sea salt in the recipe so there's salt in that can mm -hmm. I love lemon and salt it so. became my favorite she reminds me of that a lot I love tea alcoholic tea to me tastes kind of artificial when you taste this one what's cool about it again it's actual tea uh, best way for me to describe it is it's almost as if sweet tea and unsweet tea were blended together. And then we add um, a little hint of honey to it. So it's got an actual tea flavor with a really unique taste to it. So, and again, we get my fourth baby on the way, so we gotta make this thing work. Uh, is the fourth baby gonna be named Coral? It could, <laughs> for, the right, for the right price. You make a deal today, you get naming rights. Before we jump into peppering me with questions, can you tell us what your ask is today? So as a company right now, where we got to, we're, we're raising 1.5 million uh, for 10% of the company. We have three new flavors that we're coming out with. We're not launching them right now. It's part of this investment raise. What are your ingredients like? Because I don't see any on here. Is that I know everyone's going towards clean ingredients. They want to read the label and make sure it's all like not junk or anything in it. How does so that look no like? artificial flavoring, yeah. no artificial sweeteners. So it's as, it really as clean as, as you can be in what our about category. citric acid, natural flavors, all, all that stuff? Yeah, all natural flavors. Okay. Um, uh, like I said, pure cane sugar, just two grams. So my initial feedback is the product's delicious and I you know, give you all total credit for what you've accomplished so far. I'm just struggling with the valuation because it, it feels as if you're wanting me to pay today for what you're going to experience in the future. And so I'm struggling with that valuation relative to the amount of sales. We did, in revenue through June, we were about 140,000. Um, in the last two months, we doubled that. What have you done, what have you done in the last 30 days? 47,000. Tell me about your unit economics. How much does it cost you to produce? I kind of have a ballpark on my head already. That's yeah, why. <laughs> me too. I was making assumptions. But the, yeah. the cans that you have in front of you have a shrink sleeve on them with the, the capital that we had and the amount of product that we could produce at that time. Um, we had to go that route. We couldn't buy large enough to do the painted can. The painted can application drops our costs just on the cans from 28 cents to 14 cents. Oh, wow. So this production run was 1872 a case, and we sell it to our distributor at 2656. So what would be your marketing plan? I think the online piece is a huge opportunity for us. How do we get this directly to your consumer? And you seem to have potentially found a workaround for that. So that part of it's intriguing to me. But I just don't know how at the level you're at right now. I just I, I don't know that I can make that play for you. And with I mean with that I, I just don't know how much value I can add to the equation with what I bring to the table from Trend Ventures. So I'm just, I'm having a really difficult time getting to where I might be making a play. So I, I would almost say like, because of that, I'm, I'm out. I think you're doing a really great job of just getting your foot in the door a lot in these Texas stores. So kudos to you for being able to accomplish all that in a short period of time. I just can't get anywhere near a $15 million valuation in this market. Um, so I think unfortunately, I'm gonna have to, to bow out at this point. Uh, yeah, to be completely honest, I'm sure you guys are going to sell in three to five years for a huge number and I'm going to be kicking myself in the back for this. I just I just think that either I'm too late to the game, you guys have progressed too far to where I feel like the value that we're going to provide, again, may not even make sense for you at this point. You because, kudos to you guys. Yeah. You guys are killing it, you're doing a great job, and you did a great job today too presenting. Thank you. This is awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, we appreciate it so yeah. much.